Welcome back to The Ref Show. We're really sprinting through this week. Uh, Keith Hackett, you'll have to keep up with us, yeah? Uh, and Mark Lawrence. What are you trying to say uh, to him? <laughs> <laughs> we, he needs to retake his fitness test. You're right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um, law changes, uh, including uh, the end of so-called uh, triple jeopardy, as you recommended uh, on the show last week for denial of a scoring opportunity. Kickoffs can go backwards. We'll talk about that. Uh, and when a referee is snowballed, as Anthony Taylor was, with big, mac a big match uh, decisions right through 90 minutes and emerges victorious, we think. But Accrington nil, AFC Wimbledon nil, League 2 match, which wouldn't have rated a mention, other than the fact that the referee whistled for half-time, and this was Trevor Kettle, I don't need to add to, to that, uh, just as the ball was entering the AFC Wimbledon net, Billy Key's shot. Have you seen that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, would, oh, I straight away, because I sort of know John Coleman. So I just imagine the manager of, of Akron, I can just imagine the stream of abuse that, that came Mr. Kettle's way. We're not justifying the abuse, but we can No, 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 but, but, it's, it, but just it, let it play on until it goes dead, and that's it, isn't it? What's the problem? Yeah. Clive you know, Thomas all well, over again. Aren't well, we? it is, and, and from Clive Thomas's days, we instructed referees, look, uh, you want to blow time when the ball's neutral, so you you avoid any chance of that. Yeah. Come on, get that's, real. That was Zico, He's right? gone to sleep, hasn't he? He's ready to go have his cup of tea at half time. He's switched off. How can you be blowing the whistle for half time as a guy shooting? Well, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, poor officiating. And it cheats the public of a goal. It? Yeah, cheat Accrington Stanley. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Zico, Brazil, 1978 World Cup, the Clive Thomas incident. And referees have, by and large, avoided doing that ever oh, since, haven't they? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but it's unfortunate for Clive Thomas, love him or loathe him, that's all he's ever remembered for. Yeah. yeah. Whether you thought he was a good referee or a bad referee or whatever, and he probably still loves his mother. But, you know, it's like, as soon as you say Clive Thomas, I bet if you Google Clive Thomas, that's the first thing that comes up. Yeah. I'll try that later. Yeah. I'll try that later. Anthony Taylor, great game. Everton 2, West Ham 3. Loads of Morales sent off two yellows, uh, correct right. denial of uh, two penalty shouts. I think, yeah. I, well, I've come to you for the penalty shouts yeah. for handball. Uh, loads of, of, of things to, to judge. How do you think he came through? I think Anthony Taylor is the inform referee at the moment. I think he's doing really, really well. You know, I've questioned the fact that he's a Manchester uh, resident refereeing Manchester United. I've, 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 I've doubted that. Now, Keith, that would be worse Appointment. if he was from Surrey. That would be a little bit more <laughs> advantageous. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Good point. But, but I do think, I do think he's a cracking referee. What he's, do you think? I mean, it seemed, did he get most of those right? He did. did. There were he a couple did. of shouts for handball. I thought it was ball hitting rather than... Yeah. The, other, the other thing, I mean, that, that having played, that is so, so difficult. Because, yeah. you know, because sometimes they're given and sometimes they're not. But people forget that this speed of which, you know, it's, it's, it is not, it's hardly even a split second. It's, and to get your hand in the way, I tell you what, is really, really difficult so quickly. Yeah. There was also a, a very tight penalty call to Everton right on the penalty line, but the line's part of the area. So. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Lee Mason, uh, routine it would appear. Uh, I know you watched this game. This was Manchester mm. City 4, Aston Villa 0. No headlines, nothing at all, but you watched this with a delegation of... United States officials uh, who are over as part of a URL, the ref training uh, camp. Um, well, and you've got some queries. Well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm clear. Uh, I'm, I'm biased about it all. I don't think Lee Mason is good enough uh, to be a Premier League referee. And, and for all sorts of reasons. He looks nervous. Out on the field he's nervous. This was an easy game to officiate. You would have expected him just to fall into the background. But he comes up popping up with decisions and you query them and you're looking at his performance technically and there's a degree of incompetence. For me, he's just not good enough. And, and, I, and it's like a player, you know, you can be a great championship player, but you're not a, a Premier League player. And, I, and this is where I'm coming with Lee Mason. Really nice guy, harsh in my comments, but then, you know, I had to fight hard with Philip Don to get professional referees in this country. And if we're going to have professional referees, then we've just got to be a bit better than the man in the local park. I was, I was at the game because I was working for radio. And I, and I have to say, it was the easiest game in the world because, you know what, Aston Villa, for all the troubles, hardly even made a tackle Correct. in the game. 
and they completely collapsed. And it was he should have done that with a big cigar on, to be honest with you. It was that easy. About, and talking of similar things, Newcastle uh, against Bournemouth. Uh, it must hurt you because you had some involvement with that club. 3-1 yeah. home defeat. Um, and best wishes, by the way, to Kevin Friend. He was supposed mm. to have taken that game. Um, mm. He didn't in the end. Paul Tierney did. And uh, Kevin Friend uh, collapsed uh, on the touchline yeah. last midweek. Uh, yeah. Taken to hospital, uh, concussed. I know. Um, I, I, saw the, I saw the outcome of that. But the great thing is that young Tierney, I've seen earlier in the season do a championship game. And I think he's nicely developing. So he's thrown in. There's nothing much said about his performance, which means that generally he's news. come away, and that's good news. We might just be, be getting another Premier League referee because they need them. Excellent. Neil Swarbrick, by the way, maybe in the same bracket. This was Southampton's 1 1 draw with uh, Sunderland. Big call was Jose Font, red card for denial outside the box. No arguments? No. no. Well, he's my mate, so I better shut up. Well, who's Preston, he's a Preston boy, Neil Swarbrick. Yeah. Is he? Oh, of course, right. Yeah, so I know Neil. Yeah. yeah. I think he's. I mean, I think Neil. I mean, I see him week in, week out, and I, and when he gets the appointments, he officiates really well. And I, I mean, I, I don't know why he's, he's not getting those appointments on a more regular basis. Yeah. He had one. He had one dodgy game that I can remember when he should have. It was over a handball incident, yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't, and he got it wrong. Yeah. And I remember talking to him, and he just went, oh. Mia culprit got it wrong. But I tell you what he does, he tries to let you, let the game breathe. Yeah, he does. He really seriously does. So, but I'm and, and, at, and at the end of the day, Premier League referees, professional referees should do that. The public's not there to see them, it's no. to see the players. We've got a myriad of terrific players with great skills, mm. just apply. And I, and I do think, Alan, that there are some yellow cards that could be prevented. You know, there's a point at which the, there's a barometer in a game and sometimes you can let it go too far and the players think, who's in charge? Nobody. Yeah, I'll take it. it into my own, own hands. I think it's just imposing through personality yeah. that level of control. That, interestingly, that denial offence uh, for which Font was sent off was outside the box. Player gets sent off. Now, uh, FIFA have, uh, with the IFAB, have, have, have changed it so that inside the box, had it been inside the box, he wouldn't have been sent off, triple jeopardy right, has, okay. been, has been removed. I know it's something you've advocated. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I think that, um, you know, it's denial of an obvious goal and it's replaced with a penalty kick. So I've always thought triple jeopardy uh, and it's, it's too heavy a punishment. You know, at the top level of the game, we pay whatever, 45, 50 quid to watch a Premier League game. We want to see 11-11. And I think if the referee's mentality and the coaching is such, and the manager's such, then 11-11 becomes a better, in my view, a better entertainment than sending players off. Five off in one weekend is too many. Do you, th do you think in the 2010 World Cup in South Africa that yeah. Howard was told, keep, keep them on the pitch? You're talking to his coach here. His no, mentor. but that's what I mean. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I was commentating on it and you're just, you're just kind of thinking, you just wonder with FIFA, well, we know what they're like. They're almost saying, put a bit of pressure on the referee, saying it's the World Cup final. It's the showpiece. Just, you know. I, 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 I don't think he's too far off the mark. I mean, I can remember doing the opening game in the Euros in 88, Germany against uh, Italy. And uh, I was given that instruction before I stepped on the field of play. Well, yeah. We, Absolutely. Yeah. Right, we could do a whole ref show on, on this subject. Just, just wrapping up, uh, before we just top and tail with the law amendments, it is Respects Weekend from uh, don'tcrosstheline.com, uh, uh, which is a great website. Mal Lee over in Merseyside is behind that initiative. So do get behind that this coming weekend. Here, uh, we happen to be in a studio in Sheffield, Sheffield Referees Association have taken the step at their next meeting of inviting all the local leagues that they operate with to that meeting to have a sort of clear the air session, which is great. But just briefly, injured players uh, don't have to leave the field if it's a yellow or red card offence in future. You can kick the ball back from a kickoff. Where's that? Instead of always forward, is somebody going to exploit that? Is there some way of exploiting that? Well, unless you want to score an own goal, maybe. <laughs> Get the ball back to the goalkeeper. I can't, I can't really see. I mean, why, why would you want to knock it backwards? I, 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 don't, I don't really get that. 
You don't even want to play in the opposition half. Yeah, but know. could you ping it straight back to the right back who pings a ball that the left side midfield player is waiting for delivery by, you know? I, well, I, I mean, I, 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 I think there are bigger issues in the game yeah. than that. And, uh, and, and I'm pleased about denial of an obvious goal scoring yeah. opportunity. Yeah. I, I'm seek to gain clarification about the deliberate hand on the line. Yeah. You know, uh, what, it, what impact it has on that. Um, I, I think that the justification is that, is, is that sometimes you make law changes without too much thought and then you're spoiling the game. That's a puzzling one, really puzzling one. Mark, thanks ever so much. Pleasure to see you once again. And Keith, and thank you to you and thank you for your comments. Keep them coming to youaretheref.com and we'll see you next week. Bye.